All right, so I want you guys to tell me your names and where you're from. I'm Carolyn Miller. I'm from Mesquite, Texas. I'm Cassie Clayton. I'm from Mesquite, Texas. And tell me the name of your loved one that is being memorialized here this weekend. Barry Neil Miller. And what relation is he to you? My husband. Your husband? My dad. Your dad? Okay. So tell me about Mr. Miller. Dr. Miller. Dr. Miller. <laughs> Not licensed or anything, just... Uh, great guy. Always uh, lived large and in charge. Uh, every day was an adventure. I would say he lived life to the fullest. He was always wanting to learn and therefore wanting to teach. Uh, How long were you married? 28 and a half years. 28 and a half years. Wow. Um, when and how did Mr. Miller pass away? He was actually in the hospital for a blood clot, getting treated and was running circles around the nurse's station getting pudding. And uh, I got a, to be released the next day and I got a phone call at 6 in the morning uh, that next morning and uh, he had had a, basically he was in ICU. He was declared like brain dead. What made you all decide to honor Mr. Miller by having his ashes sent out into space? I would like the world to know <laughs> that it is very expensive to put your obituary in the paper. And after writing, his mother dearest <laughs> said he would kill us if we spent that much money putting it in the paper. You know, like. So my husband and I were sitting there talking about it and we'd heard of different things that you can do with ashes and making jewelry and things like that, which I was scared to death of losing it. <laughs> so I wasn't gonna do that. But um, we just said, man, you know, dad really would have loved to go to space and being his daughter, so the nerd that I am, I uh, looked it up and I was, shocked to see that it was so it was doable I mean it was we didn't think it was it's very affordable very affordable <clears throat> and, and not and, a pain and he was always seeking a thrill and, and he kind of belongs up in the stars kind of where he is now already in heaven he gave us stars he, he named stars after oh. us when it was years and years ago little girl so we both have them still named wow uh, so he probably wanted to get a good look at those <coughs> yeah how has mr. Miller passing away affected your life oh everything changed uh, huge void uh, definitely unexpected I don't think you can ever prepare for a lot of things but it was uh, quite a shock he was uh, he was kind of loud you always knew he was around He's had a big presence, so uh, it affected my life differently than Cassie's, but uh, it's missed by a lot of people. What about you, Cassie? How has your dad's passing affected your life? Um, well, I was always, uh, I guess, a daddy's girl. I don't know. I just, I was a mama's girl and a daddy's girl, but with, we just had like this. I don't know connection and that was different than anything I can explain but without sounding kooky yeah. <laughs> I felt closer to him from the moment that before he was even declared you know all that that I, we pulled up to the hospital and I stepped out and I could just feel them there, and y'all get spiritual all up in here. Um, go ahead, go for it, honey. I'm I here for it. Him, <laughs> I heard him say, Cass, you know, like, what's going on? You know, and, and I thought I was crazy, <laughs> but I just, I, all I knew to do at the time, I, I said, I said, Dad, I don't, you know, just, Go to Jesus, go to Jesus, go to Jesus. And that takes a lot of faith to do that because 
like naturally you want to say come back to us you know like right. like we don't know what's going on either or whatever but all i knew was that that's what that's what you need to do and ever since the moment i'm telling you that we pulled up i've felt an even stronger connection to my dad that like people will things that make people cry i i get excited about because i'm like that part out. but it just just different things hit me differently because I feel his presence so it's like he's speaking to you through these experiences yeah and I think of it as um, as hope in a certain way that he looking back I can see lessons that he <laughs> taught without letting me know that he was teaching any lessons <laughs> and testing me to see where my faith was he never pushed anything on me and neither did she you know I think but, for I think for me you asked how it affected me the best way I can describe it is that you know when you walk in high heels I think I was so used to we were just a great partnership out of all the years we were together we never even had a fight we were just it was just a great match. And for me, it was like wearing high heels and then without him, it was like walking with one of them off. Wow. It was just trying to keep balance in my life without, but it was that difficult. You know, it was like I've walked everywhere since I was a year old, I guess, I don't know. Maybe I walked on time, I'm not sure. But it was just learning how to walk again and stay balanced without. Now, you told me an interesting story about your cross necklace that you're wearing. You mind sharing that? Oh, no. Uh, when Cassie graduated from high school and was going off to college, uh, one of the things we gave her was a cross necklace. And while we were trying to find the exact right cross necklace, um, we found a necklace that was, uh, there's one that is a larger necklace that was Barry's and then one that is a smaller necklace that was mine, and so we all three had a cross necklace. But then the way ours, what was special about ours is it's like a puzzle, that there's one inside the other. So when he died, I took his necklace off, and I put the puzzle together, and now I'll wear it so it's complete. Wow. So how do you feel about tomorrow's launch? Are you excited? Are you nervous? Said lunch. <laughs> I said lunch. I was lunch. like, this just took a turn, guys. I mean, launch. I said, I'm kind of full. I just had. Sorry. Big I'm sorry. Meal. I meant, lunch. if I said lunch, it's because I'm hungry. No, I meant you said launch. lunch with an accent. Oh. Launch. You've been You're around Texas, Texas too long. You're rubbing uh, off on me. Yes. <laughs> the launch. Uh, we are super excited. I think even. Uh, more so, the, this experience has been even better than I ever thought it would be. We met some great people. Um, I just know how excited he would be. He would think, he would get excited over a, a roll of lifesavers. You know what I mean? He just liked anything. He was, But this would be top, mo top notch for him. And uh, so I know that he's happy about that. And, I just hope he doesn't tell him how to drive the. the <laughs> oh, he will be right there. He, he will the either want to help or tell him how to do it. He's just, it's, but I know he's excited. Although uh, compared to heaven, it might not be as glorious as I thought it was when we first booked this two and a half years ago. Yeah, it was. Yeah, uh, yeah. but um, I think it's going to be a, a a great day. I'm really looking forward to tomorrow. So I have one more question for you guys. Um, after having going through, after having gone through the process of making the funeral arrangements and deciding how to bury your husband and going through the grieving process, which I'm pretty sure you're still experiencing, what, if any thought, have you given to how you want to be remembered and memorialized? And what method of disposition would you all like? And by that I mean, do you want to be cremated, buried, and has it changed our yes 
Well, this one already knew what she wanted. Which is? Before. We, I, I don't know if this is offensive or not. No, go ahead. We don't want to be there for our funerals. I want to be a, actually I have a, a, some of my thoughts have changed. I didn't know the whole process, but uh, out of the, I definitely want to be cremated instead of uh, so the traditional it's our, route. It's our last shot at a smoking hot body. Oh. <laughs> but I saw that on a sign. That's not my joke. We can but cut it even out. though uh, my family has uh, a lot of uh, cemetery plots that just, I didn't think through it, but I, I do miss having a place that to just go visit him, even though I I have him. Right. And uh, I haven't really wanted to let go of him yet. This is the first part. Give some to his mom, some to you. I mean, but... You see how the light changed when you started talking about that? Yes. Girl, That's a sign. I'm so proud of you for noticing that. That's so, a sign. He's saying it's okay. Oh, you don't have to give me any of them. I do know that it's okay, but I, I, <laughs> but I still miss that spot. That you have a spot with them, just like I, I have Pasco Park. I know I do. Uh, but it's something for somebody that might be going through it that is just something I never really thought about because I don't think of people in the ground. That's right. not it. So I thought that wasn't important. And it doesn't have to be a cemetery plot. Uh, but I do think that's in, in important. So I may pick my plot. I may, like I may pick my Gump's spot bitch. where I want y'all to come visit me. Um, so, so I definitely want to be uh, cremated. And uh, I'll turn you into some it. jewelry. What about you, Cassie? What do you want? Um, I really. It sounds silly, but I really have never cared much. I mean. I guess I cared. I just always assumed that I would be buried. I like I like the thought of being buried next to your other person, you know. But I also you never know what happens, you know. Like uh, I don't. I, and I'm I personally have issues at funerals, and so that really when we had my dad's life celebration. That was like life changing because it was totally different than anything we'd ever experienced. And there was no like gut wrenching feeling of, you know, I would just be scared to look if that's my problem, right? but I wouldn't want anyone else to feel that way. So not that that's why I would want to be cremated, but you can do all of those through uh, either the traditional method and cre like cremation and have a traditional funeral service right. and, and be buried. You, you can, can do it all. The cremation. It's, you can be there in the urn. Really, it's really more I hadn't given a lot of thought to all the different scenarios, but uh, I, I do think that the, we, we aren't one that uh, likes to dwell on sadness. We always like to celebrate the good part, and I know Barry loved his celebration. It was a, a great time with hundreds of people. It was and, cool. Uh, wow. It was really cool. Uh, that was one thing we got right. And, it was really uh, cool. So I highly recommend that for for us. Um, and I think I'm having a party when I die. I will not be present. They won't have to worry about anything physical. I'll be there spiritually. Mm -hmm. But I want people to dance, sing. Not like... Yeah. Yeah, right. like, she's like, gone. Like, yeah, like yeah, like she's you know what I mean, and and the life that we had with her, you know. Right. Of course, that's easier said than done. I'm like, oh, now I'm thinking, sitting her next to my mom. I'm like, oh, no. I told her, I said, if you ever do anything to me, it's not gonna be, mom, are you okay? Like, mom, wake up, <laughs> like because I'm not playing with you. <laughs> like nothing can happen to you. You're right here. Well, I just want to tell you guys thank you because you two have been lifesavers this trip. Seriously. Um, you've been so kind and welcoming and I almost feel like we came here together. We did. Yeah, I think of everyone here, I've made the closest connection with you two. And it really means a lot to me that I got to, 
or that I get to share this part of your journey. So thank you. And in addition to that, thank you for all of your help with the equipment and oh, cool. just you everything. Seen anything yet. I'm so excited. So, thank you. Thank you. Well. Thank you for making this trip even more special. Thank you.